right uh warm greetings uh, once again this is um uh mr masachenko presenting uh investment appraiser okay so i think we covered if you have uh following a subscriber to our youtube channel you can actually see that we covered um, uh, some of the appraisal techniques that we have uh just a recap of what we covered we said um, investment appraisal is a way of assessing the viability or feasibility of a project and we've got quantitative assessment and qualitative assessment and under each there are a lot of methods that are available but usually we have got um, uh, quantitative method that we are going to start today. Under quantitative method uh, methods, we have got accounting rate of return, and then the payback period, and the net present value, then the internal rate of return. So last time we covered that accounting rate of return is in a method, a quantitative method that uses uh, profits to determine the viability of a project. And we said we need to use the accounting rate uh, of return uh, percentage formula, which says uh, average profits of average capital employed and uh, Average capital employed is usually taken as to be one half of um, one half of um, uh, the in initial outlay. Okay, so I think that is that on that today. I want to cover on payback period. Okay, payback period is an accounting is a quantitative assessment which uses cash flows. Okay, payback period PBP uses net cash flows. So when you are determining the payback period, we are saying we want to come up with uh, the number of years that the net cash flows will take to recover the initial investment. Okay. So what you need to do now in this case, when you want to determine the payback period, maybe you need to take this down if you missed the, our previous lesson. We are saying payback period is the number of years that the net cash flows will require to cover the initial investment. Okay, so we are saying let's say let's try to see at this project. This project uh, was in this project they invested in this project they invested how much? Uh, they invested uh, they invested five million. So we are saying how much? How many years does this take to cover the initial what investment? So we need the first step you need to do is to determine uh, the net cash flows. Okay, and on our cash flows, we exclude depreciation because it's a non cash item. So let's do it. We say 1 million minus 0 0.2 million, then we get 0 0.8, then 10 million minus 8 million, we get 2 million, then 15 minus 12, uh, we get um, this 3 million, right? We put a, a 3. We are determining the cash flows, the net cash flows. Then 100 minus 70, we get what? 30 million. Okay, so these are our net cash flows. So we are saying, uh, when we want to determine our payback period, we are saying how many years will the net cash flows take to recover the five million invested in year what zero? Okay, let me show you the table that you use to determine the uh, payback period of a project. Remember, we invested how much five million, so it's an outflow. In this case, in the year zero, it means the business will fork out the five billion as an outflow. So you you indicate year zero, you put it as an outflow. And the balance yet to be recovered still is five million. Remember, we want to determine the number of years that is required for us to cover the five million. Then in year one, the net uh, the net cash flow was uh, plus. We we had we received surplus of inflow of zero point eight million. So we are actually take your calculator. We say five million minus zero point eight. Then we get. Uh, we get 4.2 million. This is yet to be recovered, so it's in brackets, okay? I think you need to take note that it must be in brackets, okay? It means it's yet to be recovered. It's still a balance, right? Then out of the 4.2 million in the, in the second year, this is in year two, okay? This is in our year two. I don't know what happened on this one. Let me check. At the back there but it must be our year two where we received two million yes year two not year three we received the what two million okay two million so we are going to say take your calculator again 4.2 million minus two million we get 2.2 is our balance yet to be recovered okay this is our balance yet to be recovered 
So what do we do? We still have 2.2 million. And remember, payback period, as I previously articulated, we said payback period is the number of years required by the net cash flows to recover the initial investment, which is our year zero investment. Okay, so we are having how much? A balance at the end of year two, we have a balance of, I think this was a technical issue, this year number three. We still have a balance of how much? Uh, 2.2 yet to be recovered. Then we received 3 million, 3 million. So it means the 3 million covered the 2.2 million. So it means our payback period becomes one, two, two years. So we put a dash here because all oh, the balance of 2.2 has been covered. I think you are following. Okay, let me finish up, then I will try to come back on this one again. All right, so our payback period in this case is actually two years. But there are a little bit of months. If we had, if this one was 2.2 million, if this one, uh, this 3 million was an inflow of 2.2, it means it would take us a year to recover this, okay? If it was 2 Okay, it, if it, this was 2.2, yeah, it's an assumption, right? I want to try to clarify the point. If this was 2.2, it means it was going to take us another year. So our payback period was supposed to be three years. But this time around, it's more than 2.2. So it means it will take us less than a year. So we need to determine the months, okay? The months that are, that is 3 million will take to recover 2.2. So what you do now is you say 2.2 million divided by the inflow that is coming in that year, you multiply by 12, then you get your 8.8 .8 months. So our actual payback period in this case becomes what? 2.2 years uh, around approximately nine months. That's how you do your, your payback period. Okay, let me try to erase and try to come up to explain again so that the, uh, everyone will be will be on a, a good platform okay all right let me proceed to check uh, where is this all right this is my plan here all right but I think you are getting the, the concept, okay? This is another um, question that I've given you here. Uh, and you're expected in this question to determine what? To determine at the accounting rate of return and also the payback period. The question is, how do you go about it, okay? Let me uh, try to assist you on this one, okay? Uh, let me start with the first part. I want to help you here, but you must have done this one on your own. But I'm saying, uh, let's start the question. Uh, it's a task. Uh, in year one, in year one, how much is uh, our revenue? Our revenue in this case is 400. Then our rental is this one. So when we want to calculate, let's start with um, uh, with um, with accounting rate of 10. We are expected to calculate the profit first on this question. We're expected to calculate what? Profit first. So profit is simple. If you want to calculate profit in this case, you are going to say 400 minus 10, 400,000, 400,000 minus 10 minus depreciation is also part of, um, part of our expenses. Then we get how much? Minus 4,000, then we get 386. Then we write that one, 386 on this one, is our profit, 3,886,000, eight, okay, 6,000. Okay. Right, then you do the same, you follow that procedure, you get your profit, after getting uh, the profit, let's say you get the total year. I want to do a shortcut on this one so that you can understand. Then the answer that you get, you divide the answer by, you want to get the average profit. Divide the answer by what? 
by how many years? Four years. Okay, you divide the answer by what? Four years. Why four years? Because we need to calculate our average capital. And not, not our average capital, our average profit. So you are going to calculate here, you get another figure, you get another figure, you get the net profit, and then you get the, the total. Okay, you are supposed to get the sum on this one. And then you divide the sum by four years. Okay, you divide the sum by four years. Then you need also to determine the average capital employed. The average capital employed is usually taken to be one half of the initial investment. Okay, that's how you do this one. After getting this, you divide what you have obtained on this one, divided by 450,000, then you get, you multiply by 100%, then you get your accounting rate of return. Okay, I think I've done this one for you. All right, but the question is on this one, how do you calculate payback? I think this is a tricky question, okay? Payback period only uses cash flows. Payback period only uses what? Cash flows. So how do we go about it now? Okay, uh, let me show you. We say the payback period uses net cash flows, net cash flows, and it avoids non-cash items such as depreciation. So in our computation of our net cash flows, we need not to include depreciation. Okay, let me go to the question you will see. Uh, uh, what I'm, I, 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 I am trying to, so we're saying on accounting rate of 10, you calculate profit, but on payback period, let me just use the same table. Uh, you, you use this one for payback period. You use the cash flow. Okay. And the cash flows excludes what? Depreciation. So in this case, now to calculate our net cash flows, we are going to say 400,000 minus 10,000. Then we get how much? We get 301, 390. This is our cash flow, 390, okay? So are you seeing the difference now? In calculating accounting rate of 10, we needed to calculate the overall profit, which includes the expense depreciation. But when we are calculating now the payback period, we exclude depreciation, we don't include depreciation in that. I think it's making sense. Let me also calculate, take your calculator on this one. You say 450, 450 minus 200. This is how you get your, it's 450, this one, minus 200, then we get what? 250, okay? 250 on this one, this is our what? 250, this is our cash flow, okay? But you can actually see that it's not our profit. Let me also just indicate the figure for profit. For profit, you say 450 minus 200, minus 2,248. I think you can actually see that there is, the diff there is a difference between cash flows and profit because cash flows do not include what? Do not include net cash items like depreciation, okay? Uh, I think you can actually do the math on this one. Okay, try to do the math on this one on coming up with the cash flow. Okay, thank you so much. It's 100 minus 40, then we get how much on our cash flows? We get 100 minus 40, we get 60,000. Okay, we write what? 60 here. We write 60. All right, then on this one, we say 1 million minus, we say 1 million. All right, 1 million minus 10 what? Thousand. Yeah, it's minus 10,000, all right? We get 990,000. 990 on this one, nine, nine, zero. Okay, these are our cash flows. So this is what we are going to use then now to determine the payback period, okay? So we construct our table. Uh, we construct our usual table. Let me show you the table that we are expected to construct on this one. Okay, so you need to take the figures down, take the figures down, our cash flow, so it means our cash flow, uh, cash flow in year one, and it's year one, we, we have got 390, year two, we have got uh, 250, year three, we have uh, six, uh, 60,000, then year three, year four, we have how much? We have, um, we have 990, 990,000, these are our cash flows, all right? Then, we need, after getting these cash flows, now we need to go back to our table. 
we are going to say what is the initial investment in year zero okay we use the same table okay we use the same table let me try to find an eraser on this one maybe it can actually help on others annotations okay an eraser on this one i want to work to give you a general overview of this okay let me try to clear my screen so that you maybe you can uh, is it there all right okay i cannot erase this one but let me remember we said our okay that's fine let me close this one okay so we are saying our cash flow that we the initial investment on our project the initial investment on our project right um okay let me close this we are going to put our our initial investment that was um we put it here uh, 900 is an outflow okay I, I you can see that where i'm getting the initial is 900 like this okay we put it there 900 as an outflow i'm working the other question right 900 as an outflow okay forgive my handwriting on this one our outflow then in year one we had, an, uh, in, we had a positive inflow of 390 okay you can actually see we had a positive inflow in year one of 390 okay so it's a plus 390 right so we go back and write 390 plus 300 what 390 390 on this one it's plus 390 right right so we are going to say 900 minus 390 okay 900 900 minus 390 what do you get? 510. We get 510 yet to be covered, right? I think it's making sense. It's a balance. Okay. Then what do you have? Year two. Year two at a plus of how much? Year two at a plus of, I guess, 250. If I'm not mistaken. We get 250. Then we put 250. Okay. We put 250 here. 50 then what do you do i think you can finish now okay 250 so you are going to say 500 what 510 minus 250 then you get 260 260 remember i'm working the second one for five back candy okay then in the third year what was our net cash flow in the third year with 60? With 60. So we put plus what? 60 on our table. Okay. Then we subtract 3, 260 minus 60. We get what? 200 yet to be covered. Okay. I think you are actually following 200 yet to be covered. Okay. Then we obviously we need year four, number four, right? Okay, year number four. What was our net cash flow? Year number four, it was 990. Okay, we received a positive of 990. Nine, nine, zero. Okay, then it means we covered uh the, the the 990 can cover 200 so our payback in this case is three years okay our payback period becomes our payback period becomes three years three years how many months we actually say three years plus how many months we are going to say 200 okay 200 these are in thousand dollars right we divide by what 990 Okay. 
okay, divided by 990. You multiply the answer by what? The cough. These are the number of years that are required for us to cover the initial investment, 200 divided by 990. Then we multiply by 12 to get the months. It's actually two months. So it's, it's actually three years. Three years, two months. Two months. I think this is very simple. So the payback period uses cash flows. Okay, let me just see, show you. When we are calculating payback period, we use pay back period, pay back period. We use cash flows, please. Cash flows, it's a matter of saying revenue minus cash outflows, inflows minus outflows. The inflows, all right, in this one, minus outflows. Why are we excluding depreciation? Because it's a non-cash item, we exclude it because it's not an outflow. Right? But when you are using accounting rate of return, we use accounting rate of return A, um, um, we use a profit. Profit, we say all revenues minus all expenses. So be very careful on this one. Okay, I want you to give you another question where you, 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 are, you are supposed to reconcile between uh, the, the, the cash flows and uh, the profits. What do you do? You can actually see um, the reconciliation. I will give this this task. We are saying what's the difference between the profit and the cash flow in this case? You can actually see three, uh, three eight six right minus three ninety. You can actually see that the difference is depreciation. So I want to give you a task <coughs> on reconciling cash flows to uh, to profits and profit to, to 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 cash flows. I will give you that task. But for now, let me end here. I hope you enjoy this lesson and you can contact me for any corrections, any uh, comments, please contact me and we can actually discuss. But this uh, uh, this is how you are supposed to compute the payback period.